show some really cool uh, surface texturing applications that we have. And we started out by just creating these textures on this blank plate. And I'm going to be ramping these textures or creating these textures modified off of a NTOP logo here. So really showing how we can create these textures, but also customize them off your own logos or any sort of point on your part. So I started out by importing my logo and aligning it with my plate here um, using this Orient object block, which is really, really helpful for uh, tying two objects locations together. Next, I converted my logo into explicit end top body, which is our native file format. And I just extruded this through my entire plate here because this is how we're going to make it be the source for the waves I'll be creating. So the first application that I can apply this first type of surface texture is these really cool waves. And I'm applying these waves by using a cosine wave actually. And we're basing this wave off of this logo in the center here. And what's awesome is that I can control both the amplitude, the height of these waves or the um, wavelength here. So the spacing between them. So here I have some pretty tall waves that are very close together, but we can also have these be a little bit more smooth and a little more flattened out and have them actually fade into just the flat plate here. Now we can take these waves one step further and actually apply perforations to this plate here. So we still have these waves going on, but now we can also vary these perforations starting with larger hole sizes at this logo. And as we move away from our logo, we're gradually decreasing the diameter of these holes. We can also apply really cool sort of leather effect here. And this is using our architected materials toolkit. And here I'm applying a Voronoi deboss. And so we're taking this plate and under the hood, we're creating a lattice on this plate and then subtracting it away. And we can control kind of the organicness of this lattice structure to make these more uniform or have these be a little less uniform like you're seeing here for more of this digital leather texture. Another application we can apply here is roughness. And so I'm applying this roughness to this wave plate, but I'm controlling it in my Y axis here. So we're blending from a really rough texture into smoothness. And this is pretty cool. We can adjust how large this roughness texture is and the height of this as well. Next, we can apply a triangle wave. And you can see this here. This is also using our architected materials, um, triangle wave texture. And all you need to do is just drop in your wavy plate. And we're ramping the height of our waves here. And then lastly, this is my favorite one we have this kind of magnetic effect happening here. And we can control the, uh, the organicness of this pattern by adjusting this frequency value. So if I bump this up to say 20, this block's gonna rerun now and we're gonna have a much um, more organic kind of magnetic effect applied to this plate here. So this is just rendering to the screen and then we'll be able to see by bumping up that frequency number. We have a lot more surface texture going on this really cool pattern. Uh, 
then lastly here, I'm just going to grab my original logo and we can union that back into our plate in order to get a final plate here that looks awesome. And so I've applied this to this plate here, but I want to apply this to something more real, you know, an actual object that can be used every day. And the great thing about NTOP is that I've created this workflow and I've made my logo input or the actual plate input variables. And so now I can take this workflow that I've created and I never have to do this work again. I can reuse this on a number of different parts. And so we can view an example of this. I have this cool uh, car hood here. And if we wanna design some of these grills, we can take that exact workflow that I made and apply it to this front grill here. And so now, you know, my logo is a little different. It's larger now, but you can bring in any sort of branding that you're looking for. And we can move through all these different sorts of grill designs. This one's definitely my favorite. Starting with some smaller hexagons and we're using this outer shape of my logo in order to gradually have these hexagons get larger and larger here. And this one, I'm actually varying the size of these um, cells based off of a sine wave. So pretty cool what we can do with some simple math equations and how these can actually be utilized in order to control and modify your textures and your geometries. Um, just going to open up some questions here and are the waves applied through the whole body or only on top of the surface? So the waves are actually applied to the entire body. Um, I'll go back to this plate design here. So these waves aren't too thick. Um, therefore, you know, the bottom that you can see here on the bottom of my plate that these waves are applied through the entire thing. Um, if you would only want them applied to the top, then this is where we could maybe cut this plate in half or cut whatever body that you want to apply these to, apply it to the top half, and then buoy and union on the bottom half of that part uh, in order to you know, maintain that flat surface underneath if that's what you're looking for. How would I lock holes onto waves so that the whole diameters would coincide with wave crest slash maximum height? Good question, cool one. So we could apply um, the whole diameters here. We can actually use this same sort of cosine wave in order to define our hole sizes. So we can say at um, one amplitude, we want to have our maximum diameters and at our minimum amplitude value, we want to have our minimum smaller hole diameters. Um, so that's kind of like what you can see happening here, where I'm actually controlling the core size of this lattice based on that wave. Uh, another question, is this demo file available? Absolutely. Um, this demo file will be available for download on our website and topology.com, as well as um, on our YouTube channel. Uh, and then last question, what does the B notation on some of your blocks mean? And how is this different from your other blocks? Uh, so you can see here we have some Bs. That just means that it's a beta block, um, which means that you know it's in the software fully for you to use. And 
works great, but it just means that our programmers are still continuing to develop it and add some um, more features to make it an even more powerful block. All right, I think that's all the questions we have. So we can sign off now. Um, don't forget to go to our website if you're looking for a demo of the software or a trial copy. Um, additionally, we have uh, NTOP Essentials and Toolkits training next week. Um, so go to our website to find out more information about that. It's gonna be really awesome and really informative. Um, lastly, feel free to follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we do these NTOP Lives uh, three times a week. And so it's another application engineer on my team or um, someone on our product team or another team within our company. And everyone's showing some really cool designs and really powerful features that we can accomplish and do an end topology. Thank you guys. <laughs>